On this episode of Ship Shape, we're sitting down once again with technical designer Randy Vasquez, who's going to take us through the very, very early white box of the Crucible interior. Randy, how you doing? Doing good, how are you so? Good, good. You ready to do this one more time? Let's do this. All right. Today we'll be looking at the Crucible, and kind of you can see right here, um, this is the kind of overall layout of the Crucible itself. <clears throat> so let's actually get you in. Actually, let me go to this real quick. So this kind of just breaks down the levels and layers of the Crucible. Again, this is really early concept, really, really early on, just designs in general. So we're going to go ahead and close that out and then jump in game. All right. So kind of what I've been working on is just building out the interior layouts. So this is about a maybe a week or so, maybe a little bit more yeah, you haven't been on this the very process. Long. No. This is very early in the process. It really is. And this kind of touches some salvage, it touches repair, and probably a few other systems we can't talk about yet. So we're going to get into it. So as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and enter through the rear ramp. And this is going to be kind of where ships are inside of it. So single-seater ships will be sitting inside of this thing. Hornets, Gladius. Yeah, things like I. that. Smaller ships that can be repaired internally. As you can see, as we first enter into this area, we have some <clears throat> we have some cargo. We have where equipment would be. We have some cranes and everything set up so that way, like arms can come out and kind of operate in that area. Okay. So as we continue through, we can see that like you know we have some repair pumps, we have some fuel pumps, we have coolant pumps. So anything that ship would need to also help with refitting and resupplying. So. That will also be a function of this type of ship. Okay. Now, since we're going to start on the bottom, we're going to look at kind of, we have some components on the sides, we have some airlock entryways. Basically, every single entry into the ship from the outside is going to be um, an airlock. Just okay. because being a repair ship, they need to be able to get in and out of the ship at any time. So you'll also be seeing a lot of personal storages around the area so that way they can put on suits and have equipment right there and they can re-equip right before they exit the door. This work area has, it's not open like this, it has doors. So Yes, it'll so. actually be enclosed that can actually open up as well. That's just another reason for the airlocks because, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, some of this stuff is going to be actually open to space while others are not going to be open to space and we're still very much on designing a lot of the exterior as well as the interior at the same time. It's actually been really cool. Um, Ryan Church is the one working on this ship, mm -hmm. and he's done some awesome work. So if you look up his stuff, you'll be able to see some of the stuff he's Consolation, contributed to. Idris. Yeah. yeah, not even just us. Like his other works are oh, yeah. pretty awesome. I mean, <laughs> he's kind of good. He's yeah, he kind of knows how to do things. Um, so this whole area is actually a module that can come in and out or detach and be attached. So actually, these stations up here are actually part of the module that come off. So these are going to be the internal arm operators that will actually be able to get into the rest of the ship as well. <clears throat> and those arm operators will be taking care of like these cranes that are built along the sides. And then they'll be kind of manipulating them. So let's get inside the ship. Okay. So every, like I said before, everything has airlocks. We have two entryways on either side. Um, Ideally, I kind of see it working kind of like how like a kitchen crew would work where they go in one door and they only exit the other door, so right. that way the crew is always trained okay. to kind of do that. It kind of makes sense flow-wise, right? Like yeah. if a ship is, if the crew is trained that way, then it just makes it easier. Like, all right, I'm entering. You never have to worry about, you know, yelling, make a hole, make a hole, and then everybody kind of get congested. Exactly. Now, this middle area right here is an airlock that is actually an elevator. So like the constellation, you know how the middle part of the constellation kind of just drops down okay. so that people can load stuff on. So that kind of follows suit actually. As you see here, I have 36 SCU that's able to go on this elevator and this will be able to load things. What is this? Oh, it's another entry. So this will be an entryway like an um, elevator for personnel and then they enter through here. As you can see, kind of just shares that space. So. This first area is going to be, as it says, loading and storage. We could load storage here. We could have equipment here. It kind of depends on what the crew wants to do. And this is going to be where like EVA suits and everything is stored. OK. Right. This central area is another elevator that is going to be serving the whole entire ship. So this will take you actually into the rest of the ship. So this let's go up. OK, this is in the center of that cylindrical area. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So going up, we have engineering. 
So engineering will have a lot more components and piping and everything to basically get, keep this ship running. So as you see here, we have like an engineering station, and this is where the engineer is going to basically have most of his job. So there's also right here a repair station where they're going to be going through and doing anything to get ready for preparing, like uh, preparing for repairs and everything like that. And you had mentioned that there's going to be actually a post soon? Yeah, uh, by the time folks see this, hopefully, there will be a detailed post uh, on the repair system by our own Todd Pappy. So you'll, see, you'll get to read about repair gels and all this stuff that you have to do in preparation of repair. Nice. So that's what the station's for. So in engineering, also, it connects through LX again the internal arm operations, and I'm kind of just going to show both sides to show that they both kind of feed into this kind of this area is meant so that you can get to multiple parts of the ship multiple ways. Hmm. And then this is an observation deck, and we're going to have hopefully some screens set up here so that way if anybody's walking around doing something like that, you can check the status. Kind of like when you're at the doctors and like, you know, you have the screen set up and be like, okay, this patient is set up like this. Yeah. It kind of has that type of like, we want that functionality. Okay. So hopefully like just information everywhere, right? It's a repair ship. People should know where the status of repairs are no matter where you are. So. Continuing on with engineering, we have um, components off to the wings, and this is going to be like where fuel is, where the coolants are, where <coughs> um, ballast is. This is going to have like the drone launch bays for the front of the ship. Let me go on this side as well. Again, feeds into the room, so that way personnel space. You can even get up to the other level above, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. So the one thing that's about this room is, is besides the drone launch ballast and power and fuel and stuff, this is actually where the engine array it works. So as you can see here, this is the engine array, and we have large engines, one top, one bottom, and this thing actually slides across a track. So basically this thing will slide over here, and slide back here, and this is going to be based on the mass. So if the center of mass changes, then the engine's arrays actually will move based on where their center of mass is. Gotcha. And this is because we're taking entire other ships yep. into our hold. Yep. It's a little more than just cargo. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Nope. So that is the main purpose. So when this thing is going to repair mode, though, then basically this hole will line up with the center of the engine array. Okay. And then the player should be able to climb into it and then do your own repairs for your own ship if you need gotcha. to. So that's kind of a unique thing for our game. We're not going to talk about drones for a while because that's going to be in another dock. So let's, you know, instead of going to the elevator, let's go ahead and go up here now. So basically, we're up here now. And don't worry, a lot of these things you won't be able to see in the real ship. This is all just very much early on white box stuff. So this is about the earliest white box you can have, guys. So yeah, it's you, know, you, want, you said on. you wanted to see how the sausage was made. <laughs> this, this is as early as the sausage is being made here. So this actually goes into the crew quarters, and two crew members would be sleeping in this area, and you know just some lounge, little lounge area for their own. And then you know, if they want to read a book, they don't want to lay down or something like that. But each individual crew pod will be its own dedicated escape pod as well. So okay. if catastrophic failure happens, then they're able to jump in there and kind of get out of dodge. So this is the crew common area where, you know, they would cook meals, they would eat, store food, kind of have like a little lounge where they can just chill and chat and stuff. Um, bathroom, showers, all that stuff would be in this area right here. And then on the other side, more of the same. That way I kind of keep it separated a little bit. Yeah. So. They can kind of have some privacy, but then still have like, you know, dorm mates. <laughs> so let's go up to the last floor, which is the bridge. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now the bridge is unique, right? In that it is meant to actually rotate. Okay. So we're still figuring out the designs, whether it's going to be the interior only rotating or if it's going to be the whole entire top part rotating. And gotcha. the reason why this would be rotating is we have three crew members up here, right? And each crew member can kind of change what they want to do on the job, right? So like the middle seat would be the pilot seat, dedicated pilot seat. And the other guys, they'd be doing arm operations. Um, they would be doing drone operations. 
you know, so various functions would be handled by the guys on the side. As well as, you know, one could be a co-pilot, one could be helping out engineering. The engineering station is probably the main station that's doing just that, but then also the engineer would probably go over and take care of um, repair preparations and probably anything else they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Even though this ship is only manned by four people, there's at least seven stations on this thing. Yeah, so that okay. way people will need to actually switch around, do different things. So this ship will keep people busy. So you've got the arrows on the floor there. You should have guessed it was going to turn around. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of the things we're working on. Um, so as we said before, airlocks everywhere. We have escape pods here, um, two more over here, so that way the crew can get out if they're either on the bridge or if they're in the crew quarters. So there's always something they can reach, right? Gotcha. So right here, this airlock actually will take them out to this area right here. So if there's something they need to get to really quickly, they can EVA out, and this is right on top of the observation deck. And again, they can kind of EVA out again and go down to different levels. People like see kind of swarming all over the place and kind of just going from there. So we kind of wanted to keep that as in it is a repair ship. It is meant to be entered and exited quickly, to be able to get to different areas, different levels, really easily on based on what the needs of the ship is. Very cool. So, um, <clears throat> I think I think Ryan had talked about things where these the seats themselves are actually going to be on tracks. So based on what is happening with the ship, then basically you get better visibility. So like these things will be moving forward, or these things will be moving backwards. Like there's still a bunch of things that we have to work out yeah. and kind of go from there. So, and then once these things are turned over here, then this is the view that they'd be seeing. So they can kind of overview everything and look over everything. All right, so let's do something real quick. I want to show you guys kind of, this is what the ship kind of looks like when we have other ships. As you see, I started with some smaller ships, kind of placing them around inside here. I have like an Argo in there. I have some other things like the Constellation, the Retaliator, and we can kind of see with the thing open, these things can fit up to a point. Mm -hmm. And then that's when these arms kind of will unfurl and start doing some of the repair. So, and for even larger ships, drones and these repair uh, arms will be used. Gotcha. So it really depends on the different type of repair that they will need to get done. They'll use different tools to repair it. Gotcha. And so this is why the command, you'd want the command module to rotate because when you have such a large ship in here, the existing observation deck when you, you'd end up looking at the underside of the retaliator mm -hmm. there. Yep. So, gotcha. so really quickly, I'm going to actually turn on this thing so you guys can see. You guys get a good look of kind of what we've been working with and just building up right here. And let's go ahead and turn it on there. So now we can kind of see all of the stuff fitting inside the ship. So we've been kind of rebuilding the ship piece by piece, kind of just based on the functionality and where we kind of saw things fitting. Very cool. Oh, like one thing we didn't talk about was um, the turrets up top. Turrets. So all the turrets are going to be remote turrets. So that way, these excuse me, these people on the side right here, if, when they're not doing other things, they can actually turn into um, like you know turret turret gunners and without switching from their stations. Everything's going to be super modular, as in like people are going to be switching jobs really quickly on the ship just to kind of feed the need of the ship at that time. Very cool. And that is about it for this. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, man, Randy, it's, I, I, I don't think you said enough. We, we and everybody in the community appreciate you taking the time to do these for us. Um, yeah, this is an exciting ship. I think by the time people see this, uh, the ship will be on sale already. Uh, you should have the design dock on repair from Todd Pappy. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting ship, a whole new avenue of gameplay, and uh, definitely excited to have it aboard. So Randy, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. All right, back to you guys.